um, as a result of that ANE visit, then we need to file a report with the RFU. If you go to ANE and it's congestion and they send you home and you say just monitor it, we don't need to file a report. However, we are I'm looking into how we can monitor it on an ongoing basis, but that's what we do. How, I am also still at Brooks and I'm now doing a PhD looking at bone and muscle injury in female contact sports. So I'm looking at the genetic side and the nutrition side. So general nutrition requirements for you guys. From age of 12 up to the age of 15, if you don't do any sport at all, you need 1,600 calories or 1,800 calories a day. That's if you don't do any sport at all. If you do sport like you guys do, you need an extra 200 on top of that. Over 15, up to the age of 18, it goes up to 2,200. 2, so you need a lot of calories a day if you are active, because you guys train Tuesday and Friday nights. Yeah. And if you do other sports and there's matches as well at the weekend, if you do a match at the weekend, that's a lot of activity. Then you've also got the PE at school. So you need more than you think. The general comment from a, the three key areas, calcium, carbohydrate and protein, that's how much you need on a daily basis. These are really small numbers. If it's 100 and you weigh 60, you weigh 60 kilos, you've got to time 50 by 100. That's how many grams, that's how many, that's how many grams of carbohydrate you need. So it's quite a lot that you need. And one of the things I normally find is if people are tired a lot, they're not eating enough carbs. The protein, which is key for muscle, that's if you are not active. You need over a, what, about a gram of protein, so about 50 grams of protein a day, 50, 60 grams of protein a day, if you're active. So hands up if you are a forward. If you do forwards, you guys are going to need more. Who of you are on the front row? <laughs> right, and who's in the middle? <laughs> right, you guys are going to need even more. So you need to focus on the protein, because that's what you do. The backs do a lot more running and a lot more sprinting. The forwards, you do more, more jogging, more lifting, and more pushing. You, need, you use a lot more power. So you need protein as well. That's the general concept. So, these are the key mantras. So you've got nutrition broken down into macronutrients and micronutrients. Those are the two basic areas. My macros are your proteins, your carbs and your fats. Not all fat is bad. Some fat is actually essential and you need it. The micronutrients, those are your vitamins and your minerals and your trace elements. So your calcium, your vitamin A, your vitamin B, your vitamin D, which is slightly different, and your trace elements for selenium, zinc, etc. One of the three things if you take away from this, the one thing you take away, eat the rainbow. If you eat food from every colour, but from every colour of the rainbow, so you see here, you will get everything you need. Because even though you've got red pepper, yellow pepper, green peppers, they will still have the fundamental nutrients, but they will be slightly different because of the different colours. The colour can have a very strong influence on what the nutrients are in that, in that pepper. So, eat the rainbows. Eat every colour, brilliant. The other one that's starting to make the rounds is, I think it's eat 30 plant-based foods a week, which isn't actually hard to do. That's actually key for your gut health. So if you, it's not essential, but it's from your point of view, but it's, if you are vegetarian, that's a good one. The next one, whole grains. Five a day and whole grains. Right, hand up, hold that thumb, make a cup. That is, one of your five a day. So if you compare your hand to the next person next to you, 
Is it the same? When you get to the point where you're eating more, you can't eat the quantities you need if it's brown rice and brown pasta. Your stomach and your body just physically won't take it. When you start need to start eating more, you are allowed to eat white rice, you are allowed to eat white pasta because you just need to get that fuel in you. Um, Fibre, that's important for your gut, especially if you, if anybody here, the sort of person that they can't eat too close to a match, Otherwise they feel ill, they get stomach cramps or they're ill. Yeah? Yeah. If you carb load, so so you you put your hand up. Do you do you vomit or is it mm. um, yeah. um I know it's gonna be gross, Not, but no. Yes. <laughs> Intestinal stress, which upper gastro your gastro system, intestines starts in your mouth, ends in your bum. The lower is your large intestine and your bum. The upper is basically your stomach and the small intestine. What happens with you is if you eat too many carbs, your small intestine is getting all of those carbs and it's trying to process it, it's trying to absorb it, and it doesn't get it doesn't do it quickly enough. So if you can, what you can do is train your gut. So if anybody ever done a fun run or a 5K, you get to the end, everybody is in the finishing straight. And you're kind of all trying to channel into this one little finishing end. That's basically what happens when you eat more cups. And that's what's happening with you. But if you train your gut, you get more finishing, you get more channels and you can do it. Hydration. That is one of the most important statements, hydration. You need at least one and a half litres a day over and above what you get from food. So that's basically one large litre bottle and one half litre bottle. That's what you need to drink. And again, Nelson, think of your body like a car. If your parents have ever put the wrong fuel in their car, the car breaks down. It doesn't get from A to B. If you put the wrong food in your body, you won't get from A to B. That, that is one of the key things. So, this is where you need your notepad. I've got some extra pens and paper here. What I want you to do is take five minutes and I want you to rate your week. So what this is, so get your notepads and you go Monday through to Sunday, across the top, down the side, all day, a.m., p.m., evening, and I want you to note down what you do. So whether it's oh, two sets, two sets, if it's school, guys, if it's school, school every day, Monday to Friday, and if you do any PE, when you do PE, and if you do any clubs at school, so if you do hockey or netball or volleyball or anything at school, note that down. And then at the end, I want you to know out of 10, at the end of the day, how tired and sore do you feel? So, no pain, right up to 
the worst possible pain ever. Three days a week where you've got over six. You've got a six or above. Those are the days where you need to eat more. So if you've got six, seven, eight, nine, or ten, that's when you need to eat more. On the days where you've got zeros and threes, that's when you can rein it in a bit. That way, you eat when you need to, and you get the fuel when you need to, and it gets into your body ready for you to train effectively, recover, and then go into the match. So that's when you need to think, when do I need to eat more? I'll show you later how that pans out. First one, protein. Make a fist. <laughs> that, if ever you say you need to eat four, you know, how many portions of protein today? That fist is your protein. Protein, guys, protein is your Lego blocks. They're about four calories per gram, but it's the Lego bricks of the nutrition world. It's your building blocks. These protein helps build skin, hair, organs, your muscles, your tendons. It goes into your hormones, it helps your digestion, it builds your bones, it does everything. So you eat protein, it break, your body breaks it all down, rebuilds it again like Lego bricks and sends it off on its merry way to the part of the body where it needs it most. So if you are, again, if you're a forward and you're doing a lot of running, they may be, you'll be your body may be saying, right, I need more protein in the legs because we need more power in the legs. If you're doing a lot of lifting and a lot of line outs or you're in the scrum a lot, you may be having more protein build in your arms and muscles because that's where you need it. It also has a key role in our genetics. So that's basically our DNA. So that's everything that, make, what makes you, you. So whether your eyes, your hair, what, if you've got any autoimmune conditions that you're predisposed to, everything. It's also essential and athletes like yourselves need more protein because you're doing a lot more work. Next up is fat. Stick your thumb out. That is one portion of fat for you. and as you pour the match, you will then start to burn your carbs. 
And eventually what will happen is you start to get that burning sensation and your muscles start to get sore. That's when your carbs are running out and you start to burn lactic acid, which is where you get the burning from. What fat is, it's a really great, if you're doing lots of low intensity, so lots of walking, lots of low intensity exercise, it's a really great energy source because it gets you first. It's also the omega-3s and the omega-6s fall into this family. And they're really, really important, especially omega-3, and I'll show you on cover size time. It's great for brain development, reducing inflammation, nerves, mental health, action, immunity as well. Omega-3 is really important. It's great for your hormone health and also your cellular health. So the cells, your body's made up of billions and billions of cells, Fat is needed for those. It's also needed, so it is, it's more important than you think. The good fats that you need to eat are the monounsaturated fats and the polyunsaturated fats. So avocados are good for you, as are olives. And salmon, almonds, pecans. Does anybody have a nut allergy here? No, right, so you can eat all the, all the nuts. That's fine. Um, the omega-6 is, if you use sunflower oil or vegetable oil, you're cooking, that's your omega-6. Omega-3, fatty fish. So, protein does what? Protein is what? The, what did I say protein does? It's, yeah, building blocks. This basically shows you how protein and omega-3 can help reduce muscle soreness. So when your muscles are sore after a really hard day, what these people did was they gave a group of athletes either a protein drink, standard protein drink, so a protein shake, and they called it the placebo. They then gave another group the same protein shake, but they added omega-3 to it. And what they wanted to do was to see if just protein or protein with omega-3 helped reduce muscle soreness over a period of 35 days. And these were rugby players pre-season. And what it showed, so they split the results into upper body, so that's anything from hips up, and lower body, which is hips down. Both helped reduce muscle soreness. In the upper body, so those are probably the forwards, yes, um, the fish oil reduced it slightly more gradually. You had a steady, you had a steady redu reduction. Whereas upper body, the fish oil kind of dig back a bit. Whereas just plain protein for the backs did a more steady. It shows that if you have that after training and after a match, over a period of a month, just over a month, actually reduced the muscle soreness. So your muscles actually started to benefit because you were getting the protein after training. So any soreness and any inflammation, it was being the protein was going in and replacing any soreness or injury. So on to carbohydrates. Hold your hand out again. Look, turn it to face you. Look at your palm, that's carbohydrate. Again, all of you are different. Calorie wise, <laughs> calorie wise, it's the same as protein, so it's four calories per gram. Only difference is it's not the building blocks. This is your most important fuel source. If you eat more carbs, you're not going to get fat, especially with the amount of energy that you are burning. You will use it all up. It's the most important energy source for our bodies. If we don't eat enough, and you don't eat enough, you don't get enough energy, you run the risk of increasing your risk of injury and illness, which can take you out for months. Fibre and starch are also included in carbohydrate groups, mainly because they are a carbohydrate in themselves. It's just our body can't digest it. 
but the fibre is key for your large intestine. If you eat carbs, so anything from carbs, and I'll show you some, so I've got some slides coming up that will show you what I mean about what you need to eat afterwards. If you have carbohydrate immediately after training, so within half an hour, you actually get your energy back and you can actually rebuild your energy stores, especially if you're going to school the next day. So on a Tuesday night, you have carbs immediately within half an hour of your training ending, you'll be ready to do the walk to school or if you're at sport, doing sports the next day at school. It can help with training and it's actually linked to your central nervous system. So they found that if you rinse and spit carbohydrate, you actually still get the benefit. Your body starts to think, oh, I've got more carbs, so you get more energy. So it's quite neat. that's an interesting one. Key carbs, fruit, fruit, veg, grains, sports drinks and supplements, and dairy. Those are your key carbs. This basically shows if you have carbs before and after training, it helps. So time to exhaustion is basically the, time, the length of time you can go before your body starts to burn and you get that burning sensation and you get too tired. They did some static exercises in the lab with this, this group of people. They either had sweetness or they had a carbohydrate drink. The carbohydrate drink people used, got more force, so they were able to do, they actually used more force through their legs, so they, their legs strengthened and they got more power, but they were also did it for longer before they got tired. So that's how carbs can help. It actually improved, it actually improved their performance by quite a margin, so that's neat. So the force is 2,000 difference with your force and 10 minutes difference, which is quite significant. If I said old fashioned set of weighing scales, would you know what I mean? Yeah. Think of the old fashioned weighing scales. That's basically energy in, and energy out. Energy in is everything you eat. Energy out is everything that you do. So that's waking up, training, walking, thinking, going to school, walking around school, doing its lessons, cleaning, washing, working, growth, fidgeting. If you're one of these people that sits at the desk and you're doing this all the time, you're still or there's somebody that, or there's always that one kid in class that's sitting there and their legs are constantly doing this next to you. You're still using up energy. You're still using up energy. Also, energy out is digesting your food as well. You use up energy digesting your food. So what you want is your scales to do that. If your scales tilted in that direction, so you're not getting enough in, but you're expending a lot more, you won't be able to do everything that you need to do. You won't, your growth will be impacted, your menstrual health will be impacted, and also you'll increase your risk of injury and illnesses. You also won't be able to think straight. So this is why fuel is important. There's a lot your body needs it for. Any questions so far, by the way? No? Good. Excellent. So, what do you need to do? Excellent. Pre match fueling. I see somebody's already started to drink. First one, hydration. <laughs> somebody always does it. Um, you do need to focus on hydration. That is really important, even in this weather. Hydration is really important. Who's had, I mean, I'm, I'm still recovering from it, but who's had this cold and cough this winter? Have any of you had the sinusitis that's gone with it? So, the sinusitis, that's basically where you get pain around here. 
if you drink more, if you do get it, if you do get sinusitis, if you drink more, what will happen is that the fluid will help drain your sinuses and help clear it out. What you also need to do is have a pre-match meal, which we call a performance meal. And you need to have that three to four hours before your match. What time do your matches normally kick off? Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. So basically, if you are kicking off at midday, you need to eat your pre-match performance meal basically needs to be your breakfast at 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning. So you'd be surprised about waking up that early on a Saturday. There are some Olympic athletes, so the rowers, these, the, 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 the grid one is the rowers, this is a really good example. The rowers always have their, their first row of the day at about 8.30 in the morning. So they have to wake up about 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. Purely just so they got their meal beforehand. So eight, nine is not bad. Give me some examples of what you can eat in a minute. What you also need to remember is if you kick off at 12, between 10 and about 10 o'clock, 10, half past 10, you need to have a snack. So a pre-match snack. So roughly at the very latest, an hour before you kick off, so 11 o'clock, pre-match snack, which anything can be banana, granola bar, pasta, <coughs> whatever you want. You also need to think about... High glycemic index means it will be digested quicker. So on this, on this side, Cornflakes, so bagels, toast, rice cakes, marshmallow, rice, lentils. Those are your high. Who has, if you think about what is your favourite type of bag? Who has this at home? Yeah. 
You could do you could do worse than having this with milk at bedtime or after training. That is much cheaper than this stuff. So this is the protein powder that the adults eat. Girls, this is the protein powder that the girls eat, that the, the adults tend to get, and the weight lifters use. If you had three teaspoons of this and 300 ml of milk, which is basically a highball, you'd get protein and carbs, which would effectively be your post-match, would be post-training recovery. And this is much cheaper. And it comes in different flavours, which you're going to like. Who eats yogurt? Girls? Who eats yogurt? Yeah? Do you like it? Yes. Right. You can have that as well. Have that with fruit. Who likes jelly? I love the food. Who would eat marshmallows? Right. Girls. Jelly with fruit is one of the most effective recovery sources. Mainly due to the gelatin. The gelatin in jelly, so pig's gelatin, which is a setting agent, that actually works on your tendons. So that's the bit that joins your muscle to the bone. And it helps recover those tendons. Why do you think you need it with fruit? Ah, it's slightly different. Who's heard of vitamin C? Right. The fruit and the berries have, are really good sources of vitamin C. And they actually, the vitamin C works with the gelatin and works with the food source and it actually releases all of the nutrients three times quicker than it would do if you didn't have the vitamin C. So if you have for breakfast your scrambled egg and you have some orange juice with it, you will release three times more iron than, your, than would be if you didn't have the orange juice because iron is in egg. You get three times more iron if you have it with orange juice. Vitamin C is a great enhancer. It releases more nutrients and it works with the food and helps you absorb it quicker. So you can almost have your scrambled egg as a recovery as well. On toast. And if necessary, curry bone or a sacred turkey sandwich. <laughs> who, girls, who enjoys training in this one when it's really cold? <laughs> I just said you could have this in milk after your training. There is nothing that says you cannot have hot chocolate instead of this one. If you have hot chocolate, it's exactly the same, but it's just heated up. And it warms you. The other important thing is vitamin D. What is vitamin D needed for? Bones. Bones, yeah. It's also needed for something else. What else is it needed for? Well, who's heard of COVID? Me. 
respiratory tract infections in winter. The only problem, what's the problem that we've got at the moment? The sun. <laughs> and the sun. Um, it's the earth. We are, where we are on the earth, we are actually facing away from the sun at the moment, which means we cannot get the UVB rays, which helps make vitamin D. So a supplement is actually really important in this weather. Between October and March, who, in the summer, it's slightly different. Who uses sunscreen? Do you know, have you, have you, do you know, have you know, do you know the star rating system on the back of you, on the back of your sunscreen? It's It's a good one, but if you looked at the star rating, where it's the UVB and the UVA rating, it has five stars. If it's five stars, it means it blocks out UVA and UVB completely. We need UVB to make vitamin D. No. Yes, you need the sunlight. What you need to do is not provide your sunlight. I think it comes. So if you get sunburned, who gets sunburned really easily? Five minutes at nine o'clock, you're done for the day. And then it goes. Yeah, that is why. It doesn't take that long to shine. But just before the break, you may need a supplement. So take a supplement. If you need a supplement, it's a. Post training, again, I mentioned hydration. You still need to hydrate in winter. Just because it's cold outside doesn't mean you can't, you don't, you stop drinking. You need to drink, even with the extra layers, because you're still going to sweat. And you sweat, you get rid of fluids. So you still need to replace your fluids, even in this one. What? I mentioned earlier, if we go back to earlier, and we mentioned the when you did your rating the week, and I said who anybody who has six and above, you need to eat more. This is effectively what you look like. So on a non so on a rest day when it's a zero or three and you're not working out much. That's when you don't need to eat as much. So you can have porridge in the morning, orange juice, probiotic drink. Who has the, does anybody have like Actimel or probiotic drinks? Yeah, they're really good. On a daily basis, probiotics, girls, probiotics is really, probiotic will not do you any harm. It's actually really good for you because it will help your gut as well. So anything you get, if you start getting cramps, when you exercise more and you don't, you can't get the loon off, if you have probiotics, it will help. Who likes chicken pizzas? <laughs> you can have, on the rest day, chicken pizzas, it would be great. <laughs> I've also said a protein yogurt. Girls, protein yogurts as well. This is probably less important for the forwards. Forwards amongst you could probably just get away with having normal yogurt. Well, actually, no, sorry, the other way around. The backs would get away with having a normal yogurt. The forwards, you need to have a protein yogurt. So these new are the yogurts for the protein yogurts, where it's got 12 grams of protein in the pot. That's what you need. Dinner, this recipe I've actually shared with the nuns, so if you want me to, I can share some of these recipes with you. Chicken and olive bake, 
parents can set it up in the morning and it goes over, have it going over the day, and it's ready for when you get home. <laughs> Every night, whether it's a rest day, a school day, or a training match day, glass of milk at bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> Why have I said a glass of milk at bedtime? Yes, but no. Milk has protein and carbohydrate. What does your body you're sleeping overnight, so what does your body do while you're sleeping? It recovers. So if you have protein and carbs, you have that glass of milk at bedtime, it actually helps your body recover. It helps your body recover overnight and it builds up the stores that you need and you're ready to go the next day. So a glass of milk at bedtime won't do you any harm. The next one, when it's a school day, so if it's a Tuesday or a Friday, like today, the centre column is basically what you should be really looking for. So, again, porridge, same breakfast as before, porridge, OJ probiotic drink, lunchtime, jacket potato with salad, but then, one hour before training, so your training starts 6.15 every, doesn't it? 5.15, sports drink and some cottage cheese. Who, who would eat cottage cheese here? Why cottage cheese, if you don't like it, it's very unfortunate. Cottage cheese is low in fat and high in protein. It's also a really good carb source. So if you have that with veg sticks, it's a really great, easily digestible, and you're ready to go before training. Post-training, so like tonight, you could do pizza, you could do Chinese, or you could do a cottage pie. Match day. So at the weekend, when do your matches normally happen? Is it always Saturday? Sunday. Sunday. So on a Sunday, this last column is what you're looking at. So if you are, so your matches are midday, you need to basically have more breakfast. So you shift, this would be effectively your pre performance meal. You need to shift the food down to your breakfast, which means pancakes, eggs, fryer, egg fried rice, steak. 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 <laughs> no, do you know what? That is actually not a bad thing. Yes, actually. There are some premiership footballers who, even if they have an early kickoff, they will always have spaghetti bolognese as their principal meal, even if it's breakfast. So if whoever said steak, that's a good thing. Then your lunch should be in the midday, 11 o'clock, girls, that's when you have your snacks, so your banana or your granola bar, those carb drinks, so like the Lucas Aid, Lucas Aid Sport, Gatorade, that sort of thing. Drink that, that's a really good thing. Dinner, so post training, so post match, so about three o'clock in the afternoon. When you've finished your match, have one of the recovery snacks that I showed you a couple of slides ago. But then in the evening, for your dinner, you can have a roast, or you can do a sweet and sour pork. Chinese, egg fried rice, and a protein yogurt again. Who likes the idea of being able to have roast and not feel guilty about it? 
You just have to be a bit more savvy about how you do it. If you eat meat or dairy, you will get all of your essential protein in one meal. If you're a vegetarian, you won't, if you don't eat meat, especially if you don't eat dairy as well. What you have to do is what we call combine. So that's lentil, dal, and rice, beans on toast. So you just need to combine protein sources in order to make sure you get everything. But you can still do it. Everything that you need, so we go about what I said about the rainbow, what do we need to do? Eat the rainbow. Your nutrients should come from food first. Not yeah, stuff like this. Post. So I would say supplements. So supplements. So food first, supplements to help. If you don't eat enough, it will affect your menstrual cycle. It will have your bone. Even though you play rugby. If you don't eat enough, it will still affect your bone health. Calcium is the most highly regulated nutrient in your body. 99% of the calcium that gets digested goes into your bone to help build your bone. 1% stays in your bloodstream to help with other functions. Your body will maintain that 1% at the expense of your bones. So if you don't eat enough calcium, your body will just take the calcium sources from the bone to maintain that 1%. So that's why it's really important to eat stuff like have the milk at bedtime and have your sources of calcium because it helps maintain your bone health. It will also increase your risk of injury. If you don't eat enough, you'll increase your risk of injury, which is not a good thing. Women, as a whole, are more prone to knee injuries than men. Why do you think we are, why do you think we as women are more prone to knee injuries? So it's the way our bodies are built. What did you say? What did you say? What Yes, exactly. Hips. Hips are wider. Our hips are more wide, are wider. Our also our joints from the hip down are more flexible because we have to basically grow and develop. Because we're both, we're expected to give birth, our bones will move. So our bones are more flexible. So when you, if, yeah, if you're in the line out, if, when you land and jump and pivot, this joint is more flexible and it's more prone to the ACL or the MCL injury, ACL in particular. Also, because our hips are wider, the angle between the hip and the knee is actually, is actually a wider angle than the men, which again predisposes us to knee injuries. Also, when you land, it's another one, when you land, Men will use their hamstrings, women, we use our quads. So we actually use different parts of our bodies. Which means that's why it's really important to get the right food in. Even though we're still using muscles, we're still using different muscles. And because we use our quads when we land and twist, that puts extra strain on our knee. We're also more prone to ankle injuries as well. <laughs> Do you feel tired and lethargic a lot? Anybody feel tired and lethargic? If you do, you may need to up your source of iron. Girls. Iron, haven't really touched on it tonight. Iron is still really important because it's a really good, it's a, it's a important source for our blood and what else, but it does 
affect, from our point of view, the mental health, and it also affects our physical performance. It gives us energy. So if we're feeling tired and lethargic, we're not going to put all our, all our effort into the match or training. So iron is really important as well. So this is a general one for athletes that are greater risk. Distance runners tend to be a greater risk because they do, they're not going out power and they're not doing a power sport. They tend to be a greater risk because they use fat more, but also their energies and their bones are, they're not putting, laying down more bones. So they tend to be at greater risk. Exercise affects all of our metabolic pathways in our bodies. Training, if we train effectively, muscles adapt because it means that we're going to get used to the training, which means you can do better, you can perform better. If you perform better, you play better with the team. So if you play better with the team, you win more matches. It rolls on. If you restrict your food intake or you don't eat certain food groups, your own, it's not conducive. You may not get everything you need. So again, what do we need to do? Eat. Eat the, eat the rainbow. And vitamin D. Key for bone health. What do we need to do in the winter? Hydrate. But what are vitamin D specifically? What do you need to do to get your vitamin D in winter? Go in the winter. In the winter, you need to have a sun. Don't think I've got it. Eat a sun. If you've ever had a bone or a joint injury, girls. Vitamin D supplement will help, especially if you have vitamin D and a calcium supplement. That will help if you've ever had a joint or a bone injury. That will also help. Also, in this winter, when you're training at night in this weather, are you getting any sunlight if you're training? No. Supplement works. This is how much calcium you need. 1,500 micro, micrograms a day of calcium. That's about three large glasses of milk. So if you have a glass of milk, cereal, glass, so you have cereal, glass of milk, bedtime, protein yogurt in the day, protein yogurts or yogurts during the day, anything with cheese on, you will get all of your calcium. And again, same for vitamin D. You need to have the high, the high rating vitamin D supplements. That, that is all it. What I want to say is if you want to do more, what we can do, because I know a lot of you are taking pictures during when I have the slides. I know they're going to, I think, what I can do is get the slides shared. So I'll send it to John, get the slides, send it to you all. What I can do, because I don't think it's going to be the last night where we're going to have the frozen pitch. What we can do is come back again, if the coaches are agreeable, what we can do is come back again, but next time what we can do is a practical session. So... Eat it. 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 just a basic understanding of food, what you should be eating, what we'd like you to try and eat before games, because some of you don't, it, it just, if you don't fuel yourself properly, then you're not going to perform as well as you could or should. Um, 
So if you want any more information, please come and ask one of your coaches or one of the players. Uh, we've got some of the nuns that actually play and they're in contact with Flint. So any more information, then please just ask us. Um, before you go, can you stack the chairs up in the corner in fives? They slide on top of one each other. Thank you. I had like I had to play with like kids around there. Like